Grand-rising, my friends. Hey there. What's up, sir? Saying hello to the most beautiful subscribers. I have two kitty cats who are now thinking it's funny to just, every time I start doing this, to chase each other around like they're fighting. When neither one of them won't just smoke, quite honestly. Well, no, that's not like Coco will, will battle a bobcat, but long story. Anyway, beautiful subscribers. Hey there. If you're new, welcome. What's up? Getting into it. All-time highs. Bitcoin, the market is pumping. It's at 2.6 trillion, almost 2.65 trillion. The market is going Insane Bitcoin dominance at 47 percent because this is about to be that. And then you'll see the money trickle into the altcoins, into the other markets such as the NFTs and the DeFi. And I've been on a DeFi rabbit hole, deep dive matrix upload lately. And I'm going to put out something that kind of help make that. I don't know if answers really make that clear, but there's a lot of money to be made in decentralized finance. There's a lot of free money being given out for, for individuals who take advantage of early opportunities. And there's and it's not much that you have to do. And you don't have to have much technical skill. You just got to be safe at all times. So I said, don't fall for any scams. And the scams usually is trying to offer you something for free. But for this, you got to do some work and you'll get what's called airdrops of tokens. And those tokens can turn out to be worth a lot of money. So we'll talk about that very soon as I try to make it to clear for you. But as I was telling a friend the other day that it, it was confusing good. It's confusing. It's always confusing. It never stops being. But you just um, bits and pieces of it can be a little bit more. Anyway, Bitcoin at 66,000. It's been hovering around there. It's broken past 64 earlier today. Six, you know, 64.8, I think, was its high. The high for, I believe, Ethereum is like around, probably like around 13 more from this, not 100%. I think it's like 4168, but, you know, double check. But we're getting super close there of its all-time high. Um, you see the market cap is almost at a half a billion for Ethereum. Binance is at over 500, 502. Cardano has been kind of just been hovering. <clears throat> While you see Bitcoin and Ethereum have been making their run. Um, Solana has gone along for the ride, but Cardano, Doge, all, a lot of these other tokens have kind of just, well, Terra is also, a lot of these definance coins have been going with it. And Litecoin has been doing well too lately at um, $206.89. Dogecoin at $0.25. Cents. Uniswap at $27. Chainlink at $27.50. Shiba Inu has kind of been hovering. A lot of rumors of what it may join, not with uh, Robin Hood. People are looking forward to that. They're all excited, uh, thinking that's going to give it a bit of a pump. And it would, but tell you, the pump is going to be Bitcoin shooting up, bringing up everything with it. Then it's going to be a point of Bitcoin. Some money's going to flow out of Bitcoin to all these altcoins because then people are going to be trying to see how they're going to get rich and buying all these other coins. It's about to be a lot of money flowing to the market, especially what we're going to go with in, in our first story. ETH is burning a lot. We almost at $2 billion in terms of price. But remember, the, as the price of Ethereum go up, that, that affects that. In terms of dollar amount, you, we care more about the total amount of Ethereum being burned, which is over half a, half a million at this point. Stock market, pretty well today. Um, NASDAQ down just slightly, but stock market has been doing pretty well this week. If you can see um, Tesla is getting near close to its all-time highs of um almost 900 bucks, or I think there's a shade over $900. The market is doing incredibly well. So is that something to be afraid of? We talk about the supply chain <clears throat> problems that everyone is aware of, but at the end of the day, yeah, you got to play the game that's in front of you. And it looks like we have not only... Um, vaccination numbers are increasing. The rates of infections are decreasing. There's other therapeutics coming onto the market, the pill for Merck that can actually treat 
the active cases that so these are positive signs. We're not out of woods yet. We still need to be diligent. And a lot of that is people need to still understand. And, and we'll talk about it, I think, in a day or so. One of the other stories of we have seen what it looks like to take some precautions, extreme precautions, some precautions, but precautions and what that may mean for the future. But we'll get to that. Positive, positivity is seeing in your, in your heart to reach out to someone who's been important to you and write something nice about them down in the comment section and forward them this video and say, look, look, here in the magical world, the computer where the internet money is about to multiply, the magical internet money is about to multiply. I wrote something nice about you it's on this this guy's channel that don't worry about it. It's, not many people see it, so we all good with it. <laughs> uh, so <clears throat> now I've had this prepared for a couple of days as I was ready and been and just like I said, just when I get focused on something, my mind going off in paths and I've been doing a lot of hands-on investigations as world decentralized finance i've been following it over a year now just gonna kick myself not just you know because i was like look i'm sick of people coming up with saying this supposed to new things but looking back on it now remembering seeing the start of um uni swap sushi swap sushi swap pancake swap curve remembering they talking about well it's not doesn't have a token yet but <laughs> Now seeing where things are at, so now I can say, okay, this is what you get in on, and they don't have a token yet, but you you trade on there. For example, I'll just super quickly explain something. I don't want to take too long, but and, I, and I'm going to do that on there. It's just it's a lot of like protocols. Somebody has a like a you what Uniswap is. Is a website you can go to, which is attaches you to a contract, and you have your um, a a wallet that's enabled to interact with it. And a lot of people just use MetaMask, which is an extension on Chrome. So you use your MetaMask wallet with Ethereum, for the most part, or Ethereum um, compatible tokens like Tezos, Shiba. Long story short, you go there and um oh wait hold on a second what was i the long story short because i said it's going to take too much to go into it it needs its own separate kind of understanding then i'll point you to like a, a video where a, a guy is like drawing as he explained it that helps once you kind of um, watch that over and over helps your brain understand it <clears throat> the you're able to take your cryptocurrency and use it to get more in a safe way using these smart contracts. So people are like, well, what do I do with it? Okay, if I buy it, I buy Ethereum or if I buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin, you have to wrap it. That's a whole other story. So I wouldn't even just, just hold on your Bitcoin. But Ethereum, you can take your Ethereum and, you know, put half of it into whatever other coin you think would be good. Or you can look and do, you know, research and figure out which would be the best for you. And then you can lend it out to other people and make money on people um, borrowing and trading, going back and forth. As long as you, for you, if it was just going to sit there, you might as well let it sit in what's called a liquidity pool, which is basically a big pool of money that people um, transact with. And you get paid transaction fees, which can be on the order of almost like 200 percent in a year, which is insane. But this is what's been happening and will be happening. But let's get into it. Anyway, the big news was that Bitcoin ET, a Bitcoin futures ETF was allowed to trade on the NASDAQ, which is the uh, New York Stock Exchange. And so what is a futures ETF? It's not really Bitcoin. So what people really want is what's called a Bitcoin, phys quote unquote, Bitcoin physical ETF, which is the cost of Bitcoin is married to the price of this ETF that's being traded on the stock market. So Bitcoin is 66,000 today, that's trading at, let's just say $66. And if you had a thousand of them, that would be one Bitcoin. So that 
ETF would be married to the price of Bitcoin. Boom. Now, a futures is like, well, it's not really, we don't, and then that one also, then that ETF has to buy physical Bitcoin for each of the money that people are investing in it on the stock market. And they do this with gold. And they've shown that anything that started to trade as an ETF, any commodity, like gold, silver, the precious metals, they have only done them in the 2000s. They've seen this. Really, okay, now we got a gold ETF. It wasn't one before. Now we have a gold ETF. The price spikes because the ETFs, and there's more than one, has to buy what it is it's saying it's representing. Okay, for so if you got an ETF that's saying it's buying is representing, you know, the Nasdaq or the S and P 500, the stock market it has to buy stocks in all those companies, and that's why it has to buy and sell based on how those companies are doing. It's not their decision. It's based. It's just. It's just basically following along with the how the the companies are doing in in the in the market so if you if you have um a etf that's mir uh, married uh, mirroring mirroring the s p 500 your decision is just okay looking up okay how did they do yesterday all right so now we got to sell this and buy that because this stock did went lower and this went higher you know they got margins they can be in but that's how it runs. So ETF that you have for physical Bitcoin has to buy Bitcoin. So if you got people putting in fifty billion dollars in the Bitcoin, that ETF has to have fifty billion. You know whatever, you know because it's different with money. That however much fifty million of Bitcoin was worth when it was bought, purchased. You know, so. But with a futures, as was you know has been authorized, they don't have to buy physical Bitcoin. It's all just speculation. Like, well, we think it's going to be worth this in the future, and so you can bet with us. But it's all based on just credit, and if we're wrong, you know, we put up collateral and this other stuff. But it is not buying physical Bitcoin. So that's what's happened. It looks like those physical Bitcoins are going to be pushed through soon, which should be awesome. And everyone is saying that now this is what's going to push us past 100,000, if not much higher, very soon. Especially if they physical Bitcoin, because I tell you, it's a supply shock. People don't quite grasp in their mind that Bitcoin, even though it's on a computer and code, is finite. That it's finite. <laughs> that you can't just, oh, well, hit the printer button. You know, because that's what it, a lot of these people still think, that you can just, what you mean is 66 Thousand. Can't you just print more and make it less? And then when you know, when you have that aha moment that no, it's all mathematical code that we know exactly where it's at, how much, you know, the mining every day, the the the, the people who have lost the, the access to it, and so to make it all of us has lost access to it, <clears throat> and how much will it, it will ever be? So buy Bitcoin. This is not financial advice. This is not any type of advice, any shape, form, fashion, advice about fashion, advice about health, advice about nutrition, advice about physical activity. This is never advice at all. This is for entertainment purposes. And it's only saying that for the dumb dumbs who think that they can sue individuals for watching videos and it, it, well, I mean, look, if somebody tell you, hey, do this, do that, and they get money off of it, then they scam you, then yeah, go after them. But I ain't trying to get nothing from you. I'm just telling you how my brain works and maybe things you can think about. Square, which is a company ran by Jack Dorsey, who loves Bitcoin, could make a Bitcoin mining system for the masses. Most people haven't been able to mine Bitcoin for years. The process relies on a significant amount of computational power that requires dedicated hardware or a significant number of relatively high end systems. But it seems like Square CEO Jack Dorsey wants to change that by making a Bitcoin mining system. Anyone interested in a cryptocurrency will be able to use. So that will be awesome. So they're making their own custom silicon and open source for individuals and businesses worldwide. Because they also supposedly are making, or not supposedly, they're in the process of making a hardware wallet. So if you can have a minor hardware wallet, boy, Square would be, that would be game changing in terms of Bitcoin. The problem is that the Bitcoin mining computational 
requirements change quite frequently. So I don't know, maybe we'll type some type of subscription service where you can be able to change your machines in and out in a, in a modular system. I'm just spitballing what kind of approach I would take if I was given like unlimited resources and people really know how to do any of this with just me sitting there and directing. You know, that's funny. Most people think I got these great ideas. If just I can get other people to do it. You got to do it yourself. So, but you know, yeah, so. Some type of subscription service, modular system, where you'll be able to change out the components as the difficulty increases in the ability to mine Bitcoin. Now, okay, I'm mean, just not playing. It's not one of the ideas I'm working on. Not one of the ideas I'm working on. If you want to have that, feel free. I mean, pay me for it, you know. Throw me a bone, but you don't have to have me involved in, you know, hey, what do you think? I'm like, nah, you can run with that. You'll probably know better how. South Korea just launched itself into a very exclusive club. Here's why its new sub-launch missile sets it apart. So South Korea has launched a ballistic missile from a submarine. Should we congratulate? I don't know about things like this. I mean, as a geek for military technology i admire the and and the accomplishment for what they for what it is but for what it means and the implications i'm not too big of a fan of war in and of itself um i, I do like technology and unfortunately on this world in our present vibrations that we see war as the main driver of technological investment. And tomorrow we'll talk about that, I believe, with the, the uh, Chinese hypersonic missile that traveled around the world and supposedly is a Sputnik moment for us, which DARPA is then should be the man. I mean, we knew they had hypersonic weapons and to say that we didn't know they were capable of that, I think that may be a bit of an overstatement. So we'll see. It's probably what we're gonna announce soon you know, supposedly that classified weapon system we have that we have yet to announce. But for the moment, we're talking about South Korea. South Korea has launched a ballistic missile from a submarine. They have joined, <clears throat> is it seven other countries? Yeah, I believe seven other countries, United States, Russia, China, Britain, France, India, North Korea, and the Club of Nations with submarine launched ballistic missiles. Now, this is speculation. And then a bit of also, well, what you expect? So one would do the what you expect, and we speculation. A couple of speculations. Australia's down this list. If France was giving them submarines and they couldn't even launch ballistic missiles from them, and we get we about to send them nuclear uh, nuclear submarines that I can't remember if they have ballistic missiles or not. For some reason, I feel like they were not, but they may be. They may be then, you know, of course you're going to be buying a submarine from somebody else. So Australia should be on this list. And I bet you Israel's on this list as well. And I wouldn't be surprised if Saudi Arabia is on this list. Any other country? South Africa. <sighs> South Africa may or may not... They're in the same class, I think, as, 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 as Saudi Arabia, is that I'm not, while I'm fairly certain, I would, I would probably bet on Israel being having um, submarines that have um, ballistic, uh, submarine launch ballistic capabilities. I'm not so sure about South Africa and Saudi Arabia, but so. But that's just my two cents. All speculation. What do I base it off of? You know, I have nothing to hire. Just knowing that the access to technology for a lot of these countries that go unspoken is, you know, quite vast. So anyway, now the the reason why this is, you know, why do South Korea need this? Why is it scary? It's because it needs to be able to. North Korea has, and out of all these countries, the only one that doesn't have uh, nuclear capabilities is South Korea. 
and North Korea has nuclear capabilities. They think they have somewhere between, what did it say here? It's like 60 something and 117. Okay. 67 and 116 warheads. So North Korea, if they go to war, could start, you know, just bombing various positions of South Korea forces. So having the, the capability to be undetected somewhere out in the water and be able to launch missiles onto North Korea would be to their advantage to have that as a deterrent or a, just a, you know, revenge, that's what it's called in battle, capability of, um, you know, second strike or second strike capability of um, South Korea or and America has threatened this plenty of times just equipping North Korea with nuclear missiles themselves. So that now that's the smaller kind of in everybody face piece of the game. But the bigger chess game is the United States and China, of course. Sorry. I mean, you know, you can always say, oh, no, you know, you're from America. So you just think that everything is centered around there. But. When you look over history, you see through the lens of it, it is always the battle of the bigger parties, or the bigger powers that, that bring in every country. So if, if we just play the game hypothetically, China, United States, having South Korea with the ability now to have submarines that can shoot ballistic missiles that could potentially be given nuclear uh, warheads if the United States needs to, quote unquote, very quickly because don't think we don't have our own and our bases in South Korea um, miniaturized warheads. So at the end of the day, we could easily turn South Korea to turn any country into nuclear power um, or as a proxy nuclear power. That's what it probably be proxy, meaning we would still control the detonations and everything, you know, but we would give it to them for delivery systems. But, you know, long and short of it. So that's what the, the bigger thing is. And that's why this is important to understand. So North Korea, and, and it also forces North Korea to just, you know, continue to just spend money into, you know, and, and we can talk about that at one point, infinite games, finite games and infinite games in the sense of we play an infinite game with North Korea is make them spend money, keep their people poor and hopefully force an overthrow of their government by having them to continue that to build weapon systems up for an imaginary war that'll never happen. As far as we're concerned, you know, for them, I guess part of it is convincing them that it could happen at any moment. Leaked. Dozens of CIA informants killed, captured, or compromised report. Last week, top U.S. counterintelligence officials warned C Central Intelligence Agency stations and bases worldwide that a concerning number of informants were being captured or killed, according to people familiar with the situation. This is not a movie. This is real life. Let that sink into your brain. Sent via top, cable, top secret cable that was viewed by, I guess whoever this is, D N Y U Z. The message explained that the CIA's counterintelligence mission center had reviewed dozens of cases over the last several years wherein foreign informants were killed, arrested, or likely compromised. In a rare move, the cable reportedly included the specific number of informants executed by adversary intelligence agencies. The message emphasized the difficulties faced by the CIA as it attempts to recruit spies around the world. Recently, rival intelligence agencies from nations like Russia, China, Iran, Cuba, have Venezuela have ramped up efforts to track down the CIA sources and in a number of cases convert them into double agents. So, like I said, this is real deal. Something's happened. We're losing our touch. We're losing our ability. So, very quickly, the levels of intelligence in their importance and understanding you need all of them well to do well they go by a, um like a three letter beginning and then it ends in um um signet and net and that net means intelligence so 
when you say humnet, that means human intelligence. Signet means signals intelligence. When you say um, what's one, what's another one? It, I mean, it's you know you can it's, it's unlimited where you can um, consider that. So you got human intelligence, signal intelligence, um, image intelligence, and what does that mean? So in an intelligence world, intelligence the human intelligence mean you put it like I just speak like you know an example. Put an American spy in the country. He meets somebody who works in the government, forms a relationship with him, either friendship, romantic relationship, gets them to start spying for them and give them information. That's human intelligence. You have human with human on the ground getting information. Signal intelligence, and then you have uh, LLint, which is electronic um, intelligence. Um, and signal intelligence are similar. Signals is like, okay, now... I'm getting um, the, the the clicks on their keyboards or they're sending messages. I'm collecting all their signals. So that's what the NSA is very good at and other, you know, the Army Signal Corps, you know, to protect our, our signals and collect other people's signals. And so you have signal intelligence. And so for a while we get into that, that or, you know, I get to other. So then you have electronic intelligence where it's like collecting now, like telephone calls, um, getting pictures of, of people. It, it, you know, like I said, it's a lot of love and where you, like I said, the romantic intelligence, find out about people's sexual preferences, um, proclivities, sexual proclivities. You know, it's a lot of information you can collect about people and systems and, you know, public intelligence, PubNet, where you, you know, what is out in the public realm about what do you know? You can get people who are inside buildings taking pictures. You can get off social media long and short of it. It's layers of it. So human intelligence gets you so much information. And, and we had times in our history where we would depend on one system more than the other. And that gives us blind spots. Like when we started to get really good with electronic uh, sleuthing, like the NSA and the CIA, then we, you know, they say, well, you know, be, oh, it's overrated to get human spies in this country. We can just listen to all their communications. We can listen. We can listen to everything. We can see everything. You know, that became the mentality. And then when the enemy figured out ways, of course, to hide what they were doing, you know, now you have blind spots. And so when you're running a good intelligence operation and the Soviets have been doing it, most people don't understand that for hundreds of years, even though you had changes from the the dynasties of like the, the 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 royal families to the the revolution with the communists, the intelligence structure didn't change, and it's been in place for hundreds of years, and so so the, the, that's why you say how are they, um, you know, running around circles around us from cyber? That's because that's what they've been doing for hundreds of years is, is trade craft, that's spy work, and anyway. So this human intelligence is the base layer of really getting to know people. Signal intelligence, now you're going on where, what, who's communicating with who and where. Electronic information is what they're saying, what's being transmitted everywhere. Love, you know, love intelligence, the visual, the, you know, the, the layout of the land. It's the layers. And when you don't have that layers, you have holes in your vision. And here... We've been trying to build up our human intelligence because we, we allowed it to atrophy, you know, wither away over time. And now seeing this, it sees that we're having some problems with, with our ability to get in there and recruit. And they think, you know, according to this article, um, I believe he said they think that the problem tends to be that everything instead of the old school taking your time building up being that uh, resource that becomes valuable over time everybody was so mission oriented that they were trying to rush things according to the cable some of the key issues that have caused trouble when recruiting spies in recent years include poor trade craft trusting sources too much underestimating foreign and, and trusting sources too much is a uh, hubris your own hubris that you were so good that you got something to happen not that i'm you know speaking ill of any of these people who have lost their lives or 
other people have got injured for this, but you know, just you got to, in hindsight, try to figure out what went wrong and how to be better, right? Underestimating foreign intelligence agencies. Now, that's a big problem. Don't ever do that. And being too, and that's hubris as well. And being too quick to recruit informants without taking into careful consideration the potential counterintelligence risk. The message described the problem as placing mission over security. And that you have to have operational security as your number one thing first. You cannot be about um, taking half measures. That is how people die. This is not a tennis match. You, you have to be at with the sense of keeping everything always in your sphere of understanding. And if anything not, you got to bail out. But I'm just uh, blabbering about this like I have any clue, but I hate to see this, you know. I, I I want my country to do well. I'm not I'm biased, you know. You gotta know your bias biases in this world though. With that said though, I love you, you love you, God loves us, and that's all that matters.